Welcome to Real Purpose with Pastor Bob Lance. God has a real purpose for each of us here in this life. It begins first with an intentional desire to have a relationship with Jesus Christ who wants you to connect with Him. We appreciate you listening today and pray that you will join us next week for Real Purpose. Hey, welcome to Real Purpose. This is Pastor Bob Lenz, Senior Pastor of New Rock Wesleyan Church right here in Loganville, Georgia. What does it look like when your purpose and your passion collide with God's plan for your life? In the Bible in Jeremiah 29 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. John 15 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Get connected. Stay connected. Aristotle once said, We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. Aristotle believed that the key to living a good life is to develop good habits. Nathan Foster wrote in his book, The Making of an Ordinary Saint, the truth is, is that everyone is bored and devotes himself to cultivating habits. Webster's Dictionary defines habit as a settled or regular tendency of practice, especially one that is hard to give up. Welcome to humanity. We all are creatures of habit. You see, God did create us with a free will to make a choice that we could train our minds, our bodies, our souls, and naturally to do the right thing. The issue is we all have a propensity to easily fall into unhealthy habits. We all develop habits and patterns that we live by. My first recommendation is that you make a list of your daily habits. Be transparent. Be real. Be intentional. Run your list by someone that you trust, someone that you've given permission to speak into your life. Maybe your accountability partner. Be transparent. Be intentional. Be strategic. Practice letting go. Be intentional. Prayer. Ask God to search your inner being to reveal to you anything that you haven't placed on the altar yet. Spend time telling God what you're attached to. You see, we all have attachments. And what do we detach from? Where do you require grace to get connected by detaching from habits? Ask God to provide you with opportunities to detach from habits, secondary things, time to develop new habits. When you make this list, make a list that what you believe to be your good and bad habits. Again, be transparent. Be intentional. We all have good and bad habits. Start small. List what you believe to be your good and bad habits. Be transparent. We all have good and bad habits. Which habits are you willing to give up first towards your transformation in Christ? Which habits can you celebrate today? In Romans 12, 2, it says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. In Philippians 2, 14, it says, Do everything without grumbling and arguing. Be intentional. Be strategic. Be held accountable. I'll say that again. Be intentional. Be strategic. And be willing to be held accountable. Discovering your purpose and passion in God's plan may require to unlearn, to detach, and intentionally, through accountability, strategically cultivate new habits and patterns. I'm just going to say that one more time. I'll say it a little bit slower. Discovering your purpose and passion in God's plan may require you to unlearn, to detach, and intentionally through accountability, strategically cultivate new habits and patterns. In Colossians 3, 9-10, it says, Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on a new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge in the image of its Creator. For those who already belong, for those followers of Christ, intentionally cultivating new habits through the indwelling control of the Holy Spirit becomes a new and consistent way of life. These new habits are described by Jesus as loving Him. Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to make our home with him. Most importantly, we are told, And whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. 
simply attending church on a Sunday, and that's if you attend 52 Sundays, it doesn't mean that you're saved. Nor does it imply it's enough to transform your life. It's a good start. Church hopping, which is another topic for a future podcast, will only delay your transformation. God will lead you to the right church if you are searching. Be intentional. That it's not about you. That it's all about seeking a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That will transform your life. Be intentional. Be strategic. And remember, the maximum you give will always determine the maximum you get back. In John 15, 5, it says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Lay those bad habits metaphorically at the cross. Invite God in to intentionally give you the strength and the wisdom to break old habits and to cultivate new habits that glorify Him. In Isaiah 41.10, one of my heart scriptures, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. If I do something that makes me feel good, I am likely to do it again. If I keep doing it and it keeps making me feel good, I will probably make a habit of this. That's from the book Addiction and Grace by May 2005. And actually, I found out that human beings can actually go behind another human being and actually draft. And these runners and marathons are Clydesdale, so the small runners get up behind them and then they're pulled along. So I put it in spiritual context and ask, who are the Clydesdales in your life, the spiritual mentors, the spiritual people that live the life that's transformed in Christ? Are you willing to fall behind a spiritual Clydesdale that models Christ, models transformation, that you can see it in action? You know, when I was at Skyline, I was a brand new believer. I remember we had men's university, and I remember volunteering. I wanted to go. I wanted to be part of everything. And I remember the first night we showed up, it was a Thursday, and I think 438 men were sitting in the, in, in, in the big room. I remember listening to a guy named Frank Gerberdink and how he prayed, and a guy named Gary Riley and how he prayed, and Mike Rogers, how he led and how he prayed. I said to myself, I, I want to be like that. You see, these men were the Clydesdales of my life. God's got Clydesdales for you. Be open, be intentional, be strategic. Be willing. Be humble. It takes great humility to unlearn bad habits and to cultivate new ones. I'm just going to say that again. It takes great humility to unlearn bad habits and to cultivate new ones that's going to glorify God. Because you see, it's not about you. It's about the kingdom of God. It's about these new desires that God's going to put in. You know, John 3.30 says, you know, uh, less, less of me and a, a lot more of him. Until you're willing to let go of you, to allow more of God in, you're never going to live that life that God's got planned for you. So what habits are you living out? Are they good? Are they bad? What habits are interfering? What, what habits are the hindrances in your life that you know, as I'm speaking, that you need to detach from? I definitely recommend the book by May, you know, Addictions and Grace. And again, this is just a tool. These are just secondary things that I'm talking about that will draw you closer to God, that will give you greater potential for transformation to take place in your life. Because as transformation is taking place, God's going to use you right where you're at. Your missions field is right where you're at. And I want to pray for you. Email me, rev.boblens at gmail.com. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you as you are on your journey, that as you're seeking detachment from some bad habits, as you want to cultivate these new habits. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as I pray for those that are listening in right now, I pray, Father God, the heart of a willingness to, Father, give up any bad habits, Lord. Father, that you would identify, that you would show them quite clearly any bad habits they still need to put on the altar, God. We pray out against any hindrances that would get in the way, Father God, of the transformation in their lives, Lord. I pray, God, that they would wake up in the morning, and Father, they'd have that aha moment that they would rise up and say, I am now living my purpose and my passion. Thank you, God. And I pray this prayer in your precious and holy name, the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, have a great day and don't forget, 
just how much Jesus loves you. God has a real purpose for each of us here in this life. It begins first with an intentional desire to have a relationship with Jesus Christ who wants you to connect with Him. We appreciate you listening today and pray that you will join us next week for Real Purpose with Pastor Bob Lenz.